In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory. Usually whenever you hear someone in distress saying, What shall I do? You think that there must be some kind of complication or some kind of problem that has come about. Maybe someone's gotten in some kind of trouble with the law. Or maybe someone's done something to offend somebody else. Or maybe someone doesn't have too much money, but they've run completely out of money. And they don't know how to feed their family. The person in the parable that we hear today has a strange problem. He has too much earthly goods. <laughs> and he says the same thing that many people without food say. He says the same thing that many people in prison may say. What shall I do? What shall I do? Instead of being thankful and giving praise to God, instead of getting on his knees and thanking the Lord for all the blessings and then opening his eyes and seeing those around him that have need, he says, what shall I do? He only focuses on himself. This person that Christ tells us about in the gospel today is a truly self-centered person. If we truly wish to be Christian, we can't be self-centered. We have to be God-centered. We have to be Christ-centered. And Christ, who had every right to be self-centered, the angels focus only on Him. All of the creation is for Him. He has a right to be self-centered. Christ Himself chose not to be self-centered, but to say the most beautiful words, not my will, but your will, to His heavenly Father, who He's in complete communion with at all times. You know, the story that Christ tells, you would think he just throws it out there. But this has been something that's been bubbling up throughout history. If you remember, Christ, who is God, was present when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. And he took them into the wilderness for 40 years. And what's kind of tragic about these 40 years is it was supposed to be a honeymoon, free of all distractions. God, the faithful husband, and the Israelites, his bride, that he said, you don't need to worry about the Egyptians anymore. You don't need to worry about the Amorites. You don't need to worry about anyone. It's just you and me. And guess what? You don't even need to worry about food. I'll feed you quail at night. And in the morning, you'll wake up and have manna. This manna is something very interesting. For those that speak a little bit of Arabic, we say it's, what is this? Manna, what is this? Where did it come from? What was interesting about the manna was that everyone was to take a loaf, a specific amount. And if it happened to be Friday, the night before the Sabbath, you took two of them. There was a reason you only took one. We know about hoarding these past months. He was teaching them not to hoard. Because if you hoard, you don't trust me. You don't believe that I'm going to make it rain down manna again the next day. 
And unfortunately, you can read in Exodus about people not trusting. And they would take too much. And guess what would happen to it? It would mold. Not just mold, forgive me for saying it, but there would be maggots in it. It was that disgusting. Because that's how disgusting it is to not trust in the Lord. To know that He will supply our every need. And they had to learn about this. Even when there was no one else to trust on, they struggled wanting to trust in other things. And that's why after they get out of the wilderness, you know, so much of the Scripture was written down so that we wouldn't forget what had already happened. And that should we disobey, it's going to happen again. It's easy to point the finger and say, look how dumb the Israelites were. They didn't trust in God. Look how stupid the Israelites were. They crucified the very one that came to save them on a cross. But every time, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't trust in the Lord. Every time we turn our back against our brother or our sister, or choose isolation, or choose resentment instead of love, we're doing the same thing. And that's why the law was written down. To make sure that the Israelites, as well as all those that choose to be children of God, remember. Listen what is written in the book of Deuteronomy. Every commandment which I <coughs> command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. You see, this man in today's gospel thought it was all about grain, thought it was all about consuming, if you remember, there was a time when the disciples were hungry, but Christ was sitting at the well. And a Samaritan woman named Fotini, who had many husbands, and came and talked with Jesus while his disciples went away to get food. And then when the disciples came back, they asked him, have you eaten? He said, I'm filled because my food is to do the will of the Father. And having exposed his Father and shown who he truly is to Fotini, he was filled. He wasn't concerned with the grain. And the disciples later on got it as they went out and became apostles and preached the word of God. I'm sure many of you all, there's been days where you've had so much work to do that you forgot to eat, and you didn't even know it. And it sometimes feels good. Father James isn't like that. I have three meals a day and snacks in between. But when you really work hard, it feels good, and you forget about eating. To do the will of God. This should be our food as Christians. And the will of God for each one of you is different. For some of you, it is to feed the poor. For some of you, it is to share your wealth. For some, it may be to forgive an estranged person, a person that is supposed to be our same family, our same DNA, but something has come between us. It may be your job to be the one to beg forgiveness. 
to offer forgiveness. It may be your job to be the kind voice in the office where everyone else is a little bit grumpy. It may be your job to use your ears and not ever open your mouth, but be a silent presence of Christ so that the person across from you knows someone cares about them. But to be self-centered is not Christian. To only trust in this world, to tear down barns, to build bigger barns, to save stuff for ourselves is not Christian. Listen what St. Paul tells us in the epistle and how tied together it is with the gospel. He says, so then you are no longer strangers and sojourners. Father James has told you many times that you are strangers and you are sojourners while we're in this world. But St. Paul tells us we're not because of something to come. He says, so then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. If God has already built this building for you, His kingdom, and He's allowed His Son to lay down His life and be slaughtered so that He could be the cornerstone, why do you need to build something else? And this is what this man was doing. He was forsaking the eternal kingdom and trying to build something earthly that's temporal. But in his mind, he thought would last forever. It's work to trust in God. But that's why Christ says, look to the children. These two boys right here, they know there's going to be dinner tonight. They've done nothing, <laughs> nothing to work for the dinner. We're lucky to get them to even clean the plates and put them in the dishwasher. They've done nothing. Their mother has. But they know they will not go to bed hungry because they trust. They trust that their father loves them and their father does love them. But I'm a sinful man. If I, a sinful man, love my children like that to make sure they're fed, how much more will our good, very good God always take care of our eternal needs. Sometimes our earthly needs may not be met, but that's where he calls all of us to help them, to give to those who are hungry, to not build barns, but to share what we have, realizing everything is from God. And that, that the person that is hungry is saying, Our Father, and I'm saying Our Father. Therefore, that makes us brothers and sisters. For those of you that prepare yourselves with the prayers for communion, there's a powerful prayer that St. Basil the Great wrote for us to pray before we take communion. And a little portion of it says, May these holy gifts be for me unto the healing, enlightenment, protection, salvation and sanctification of my soul and body, and to the expulsion of every evil imagination and sinful work of the devil. Listen to this. May they move me to reliance on thee and to love thee always. May they move me to reliance, to trust on thee. If he's going to give us his body and his blood, what more could we want? The man in today's gospel relied on himself. We as Christians are called to be children, to rely on our Heavenly Father, who has spared nothing for us, not even his own Son. May we reflect today on all the goodness that God has given us, and not build barns, but open our doors 
to share it with those in need. And may we always trust and have reliance on that good God who gives us his everything. To him be glory forever and ever.